are you doing here? In case you've forgotten, I am actually a partner in this business. Kevin, are you scared of me? No. Tell the truth. Look, I just need time to think about everything. I still want us to be friends. Like you and Rita? No. Look, you can see how I'm fixed. I've got Sally and the She's girls. She's not here. And if she was, would it make a difference? Yeah. The nosy cow was right then. Natalie. And I thought you were a man. Hey! You can wait the dead doing that. Hey, somebody might be dead by the time I finish with them. See you later, love. See you, love. Come on! Morning. Yes? Is he in? Curly? No, he's gone to work. Well, tell him when you see him that I want him, right? Right. Nice day for it. For what? Spying on your neighbours. All right, lover boy, the coast is clear. Thanks. It's a good job you were around. Now, I don't fancy myself as your bodyguard, Curly, so whatever the problem is, sort it out. Easier said than done. Thank you very much. Thanks Thank you. Much. Hello, Maud. Did you have a nice time? Oh, it was lovely. Well, I'm glad you're back to put this place in order. You know, this place never opened at all, this shop, last Sunday. And they were very late opening it yesterday. And why was that? I've no idea, but I feel it's my duty to inform you what's been going on in your absence. Well, perhaps our Maureen wasn't well. well. She was as right as nine for some wee pensions. We haven't got cars, you know. We can't go around the city looking for a loaf of bread. Will you tell her? Percy, a word in your shell, like. We're old pals. If you know something I don't know, I'd be grateful if you'd tell me. Uh, I think, uh, tell me, is there some trouble between Bill Webster and Curly Watts? Oh, what makes you ask? Well, I just seen Bill practically knocking Curly's door down. Well, there's been a bit of a misunderstanding. I mean, I'd tell you, Ken, but... Life's too short. Too short, too complicated. Okay. Hello, Maud. Now, explain yourself. Uh, I think I'd better go. Bye, Ken. Bye. Never mind bye, Ken. You tell me what's been happening. What do you already know? Well, I've heard Percy's version, but I'm not stupid enough to think that that's all there is to it. Right, well, Bill had a fit because Curly Watts was locked in the back room. Well, who locked him in there? I did. Why? I didn't want Bill to see Curly because he might have got the wrong idea. Which is? <sighs> that... There's something between us. I thought you were deranged or desperate enough when you married Regis Oldsworth, but I thought you'd seen the light. What ever's the matter with you, girl? There isn't anything between me and Curly. But there was. You've had doings with Curly Watts? Yes, I have, and I know it's a terrible mistake. Were you at it in that storeroom? No, we weren't. It was at Christmas, and it was only the ones. We were lonely and upset, and I thought I'd never see him again. Do you have relations with every man you think you're never going to see again? How can you say that? Of course not. Because we'll put a notice in the window. It won't do your reputation much good, but trade will go through the roof. Tell me some course. Course? Me? I wouldn't be seen in Wembley Stadium on my own with Curly Watts. You want to get a grip on yourself, a firm grip. Look, I'm sorry. I know I'm messing you about. Yes, you are. Look, if Rita hadn't interfered... She only stated the obvious, Kevin. You're a happily married man, you've got a lovely wife and two sweet little children. Yeah, I have. And it took you two minutes to cheat on them. Look, I just don't want to lose my family, don't you understand? So I'm the one you're getting shot off? No! I don't want that either. You've got to make your mind up, Kevin. You can't have everything. Look, all I'm saying is Sally needn't find out. She won't find out off me. But I'll come to your house. We'll just have to be careful, that's all. Hello? Kevin? Hi. Sorry to interrupt. I just wanted Sally's phone number in Scarborough. Right. I'll be off then. Bye. Bye. What do you want Sally's number for? Well, I thought I'd give her a ring, see if she fancies working in the new factory. Do you think she might? I think she had enough of Baldwin in the other place. She'd be working for me. 
Oh, you reckon you'll be in charge, do you? We share responsibilities. He does his bit, I do mine. What's bitten you? Is that everything now? No, no. Jim's on his way up with some more. Why do you need so many tennis rackets? This is for squash. I should have moved into your place. Hey, big lad, where do you want this, son? In the street, please. Oh, don't be like that. Well, she's got a point, you know what I mean? You could do with an extra cupboard or two in the corner, you know? Or a few sports lockers might be a bit better. Actually, that reminds me, uh, your shower's rubbish. Could you take a look at it? Uh, no problem. I'll just go and get the rest of the stuff. No, no, I'll go and do it. I want to lock the car up. It's a dodgy area we all live in, this. Oh, you know? oh dodgy, is it? Is that right? Come on, Sal's over here. Let's nod, John. It'll be your heads bunged up. Oh! How are, uh, how are you and uh, Sam Martha getting on? Oh, here, yeah, listen, great. Yeah, she's coming round for dinner tonight. Oh, right, you're hoping she might fall into your arms, eh? Well, you can never tell what a wee girl will do when you pour an Ulster fry down her neck, you know. <laughs> hey? <laughs> how can she resist? Has he been in? Bill? Well, I don't mean that other stupid galoot. No, he hasn't. So, things are definitely over between you? I don't know, I think so. Well, it is, as far as I'm aware, anyway. No wonder Bill's confused. Your mind's a mystery to yourself. Have you got a small one of these? Top shelf, next to the lentils. There's no real rapport between me and Bill. I mean, we thought there would be. I mean, we hoped there would be, but I just feel that, that I can't kick my shoes off with Bill. You kicked him off with Curly Watts soon enough. Will you keep your voice down? You see, Bill wouldn't even let me explain. He just stormed off. He carried some very interesting lines. Adam years, lots of them. I should have left with Reg Oldsworth. One pound fifty, please, Roy. I'd uh, like to see you in the in the cafe, Maureen. You don't come in much. Uh, well, I will, yes. <clears throat> so were you expecting to come in looking for you? Well, you said such horrible things. Not without cause. Mother! There's no fathom in you. Twice married and you'll end up an old maid. You want your bumps feeling, you do. So you'll do an hour for me tonight then, Betty? Yeah, of course I will. Enjoy yourself, love. Don't rush back. Oh, no, I'll be back by 7.30. I won't put on you, I promise. Oh. Our new boss, she's that conscientious, she's not done a thing we could snitch to Jack Avera about. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've certainly got Betty's vote. <sighs> and you're doing all right with Jim MacDonald. Who told you that? No one. I saw him on the street this morning. We're having a meal together, that's all. No big deal. Listen, um, I don't know how to put this, but... Be careful. What are you trying to say? He beats up women? No, I, I wouldn't go so far as that. I like Jim. He did lay into Liz once, but some might say he was provoked. Well, that's no excuse, is it? I'm not saying it is. Well, thank you, Deirdre. Um, I appreciate it. I hope I do the same for you. You would. But Jim's been really honest with me. I mean, he's told me all that happened with Liz, you know, as much as you would expect him to say. Well, as long as you've got no illusions. We're having one meal together instead of having two meals on our own. That's all. We're just good friends. I must have been fooling myself that I was having a good time. But I did enjoy myself. And I come back to all this lot. Well, Maureen's miserable too. Could have got your eyes crossed, you know. How do you mean? Well, she had a rotten weekend, wouldn't you notice? Yeah. But she had a good time. She enjoyed herself. We went for walks. We went to see a show. She wasn't pleading with you to bring her home? No. Look, the whole thing could be a misunderstanding. Why don't you go around and talk to her? I thought I told you it would be quick. It's only an half, Kev. Finish it. You've got work to do. I bought him the drink. He popped out for a pie. He should have told you there was in working hours. He did, and I told him he was entitled to a lunch break. I run the garage my way. So, you reckon a good manager starves his staff, do you, Kevin? I want the job done, and done on time. Well, it will be. You've not had any complaints before, have you? Thanks, no. Please with yourself. Anybody can bang their fists on the table, Kevin. You have a real problem dealing with people, don't you? You haven't got a clue. He was changing the fiver. You've been bad. You barbed my boyfriend, not me. I barbed it to you. I love it. Why should I? I haven't done anything. And you won't either. Get lost. It's a free country. I'll stay where I am. Give us the money. Oh, I'm not giving you anything. Get off! Or what? Call the manager. It's only you can't cope when you don't. He has all sticking in that big one there. Give me that money. Who do you think you're pushing? I said we want the money. Pass me nicely. Where'd you keep your notes in there? Leave that alone. What are you going to do? Give me a good slap. I'll be more than that. Get off. You go leave her again, I'll 
break you. Oh, I know who are you? One of them blokes who can. Don't touch him, Gary. I'll do more than touch I don't him. want any trouble. Oh, it's no trouble. Drop it. Drop it. You're twisting me arm off. Pick him up. Pick him up or I'll twist someone else. Pull him back where you got him. Goodbye. I'll get you for this. And you're big enough, you're too old. Goodbye. I'll get you for this. You get your coat. You finished with this place, I'm taking you home. Sammy, listen, make yourself at home. This will not be long, right? Listen, I hope you're not going to too much trouble there, Jim. Hey, look, I can make a good dinner out of a night's boots, so I can. Do you cook yourself something every night? Hey? Do you cook every night? Oh, God, no. No, I'm afraid I've got a bit lazy, so I have, you know what I mean? More often not, it's a bag of chips on my feet up in front of the tally. Oh, I know what you mean. I've been known to bring home a couple of Betty's hot pots. Yeah, well, you let yourself slide, don't you, when you're on your own? Hey, listen, this will make you laugh, look. I've got a bottle of wine for an Ulster fry. What about that, eh? Excellent. Do you want some? Yes, please. So, doesn't Andy help you out, you know, in the kitchen? Andrew, in the kitchen? You're joking. No, I try and keep him out of it all together. So, his mother spoiled him. He hasn't got a clue. So, where did you learn your culinary skills from, then? Ah, we had all sorts of courses in the army, so we did. This one came in between basic first aid and jungle warfare, I believe. Ooh, sounds like you're the perfect man to have around in an emergency. Well, the jungle warfare does come in handy in Weatherfield occasionally. I've been known to give Willie lessons, so I have. I bet you have. Listen, do you think this wine will go with an Ulster fry or not? Well, Judy Mallet says it's the best thing you can have when you're sunning yourself in the backyard. Yeah, but the thing about Judy and Gary is, I wonder, you reckon she rubs it in the shoulders or drinks it? Oh, I think it's best we don't find out. Absolutely. Cheers. Cheers. Oh! Oh! I know how it looked. Yeah, well, uh, did look a bit queer. Look, we were in the back talking it, and you waltz in and take me off to Blackpool. At... And we had a great time. Yeah. And then we came back and I blew my stack. We always seem to get on the wrong side of each other. I feel terrible about it. Yeah. So do I. It's my fault. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. It was my fault. I should have let you explain, shouldn't I? I always seem to have a habit of upsetting you. I don't know why you're bothering with me. Because I... I like walking on the dunes with you. I enjoyed the fish and chips. And crazy golf was a laugh on it, you know. Yeah. It's one of the best days I've had out for ages. Till I got home. You know, there's nothing between me and Curly. No. I know that now. Friends again? Friends. Hey, come with the Rovers, eh? I'll buy you what you like. Well, um, I think I just have to leave it till a bit later. But I thought you were closed. Yes, but, you know, Carly's been in here all night and I've got to clean up and... I'm not having you work in there on your job. I can take care of myself, Gary. What would you have done if I hadn't turned up? What I usually do, call the manager. Ronnie in the next street. Oh, some manager he is, leaving you there on your own. I'll soon sort him out. Uh, you can keep your gob shut. He's in and out all the time. He's got other arcades to see to. Don't matter any road, could you finish in the end of the week? No, I'm not, Gary. I like it there. It puts an extra bob in my pocket. Well, if all you want is a bit of extra housekeeping. No, I don't. I want you to keep your nose out of my business. You're not my guardian angel, Gary. From now on, I'll fight my own battles. You're not going to let Curly Watts get away with it, are you? Well, I was after his blood this morning, but I've, uh, I've cooled down a bit now. Eh? Well, he wants telling what's his and what's yours. Nah, I don't suppose he meant that much harm, did he? Did he mean any harm at Christmas? Don't remind me of that, Morden. Who's to say he won't do it again? But I've our Maureen up against that cash register now. But I trust him. I trust her, but I don't trust him. I'll tell you what, I'll sup this and I'll go down and have a word. Good, because one of us should. 
and it'll come better from a big, strong chap like you than a poor, weak woman in a wheelchair. Fill that up so you go, would you? Gary, not stopping, then? No. It's not until he wants to watch. Put a drop of sherry in that, will you, Judy? Oh. I'll do it. Oh. I've done nothing up to now. <laughs> you surprised me. I would have thought you'd been run off your feet all day. <laughs> I'm my usual, Judy, when you've got a minute. You know, it's like clockwork, eh? Samantha's far more organised than the Duckworths. Well, that won't take much. <laughs> <laughs> I've got something to tell you. I'm gorgeous and you can't get enough of me. <laughs> Try again. Um, you want to live here forever with the girl of your dreams? Yes, I do. But I'll stick with you until she turns up. You want to take me out for a slap-up meal to a very posh restaurant, yeah? All right, I'll do that. When I get back. Back from where? My surveillance training course. Where is it? Hendon. It's at the police college. You're going to London? Yeah. That's only for a fortnight. I'm replacing someone who's ill. Oh, well, thanks a lot, Alan. You kept that quiet. Why didn't you tell me before now? Well, it was very last minute. I, I didn't want to spoil our day. Well, you have spoiled it. Sorry. <clears throat> It's been nice having you here, Sammy. But like old times, the way it was before. Before you were married? Well, there was no before that, no, no. Liz was the only girl I ever knew. Well, worth mentioning, anyway. God, you must have been very young, Jim. Yeah, we were. So, why did you get married? Well, I'll tell you the truth, the wee boys were on the way. And in those days, that's what you did. Nothing wrong with that, is there? Better than leaving her in the lurch. Well, don't get me wrong, that's what we both wanted. Can't say the same for her parents, though. Her parents? Mm -hmm, mine as well. Oh, yes. They said we were too young, which we were. And then they said that we'd regret it. I never did. Last years of my life was when I had Elizabeth by my side and the two wee lads following along behind, you know? <laughs> well, I mean, it wasn't all sweetness and light. Uh, Liz got a temper just like mine. She gave as good as she got, that's the whole point. What do you mean? Well, what I mean is it wasn't a fairy tale romance. It was, well, I suppose it was real, you know. Uh, it was tough, tough times. I don't mind saying the army came between us on a few occasions as well. But we figured we were better together than apart, you know. Yeah, I'd do it all again if I had the chance. With Liz, you mean? Oh, God, no, that's finished. No, my fault just as much as hers, 50-50. But, um... Well, if I had the chance with someone else, I'd do it again. I don't think I'm cut out for family life, me. Well, you don't know till you try. No, no. I don't want kids. I don't want the sadness. Sadness? Yeah, they let you down and you let them down. Sorry, I didn't mean that personally, Jim. Oh, no, no, I didn't take it any such way. It's just that, well, you know, you start married life with such high hopes and good intentions. They don't last, do they? And what do you end up with? Nothing. Well, it's better than knocking about in your own, isn't it? No. No, I'd rather be by myself. No explanations to give, no mistakes to justify. So, Samantha, you, you're not interested in having a relationship. I think it's safer to be friends. And that's what I'm good at. Well? I haven't come to apologise. You've not brought the books either. Is there another reason you should be here? I don't like you talking to other men. Are you referring to Chris? He was doing it to make me jealous. Oh, please. Don't flatter yourself that you were on my mind. Yeah, well, you was on mine. We're not the same people, Kevin. We view things differently. Yeah, because you're free. You can do whatever you like. Yeah. And after 20 years in a rotten marriage, I intend to. Don't talk to Chris. I've got to work with him. I don't want him knowing my business. Well, I'd rather talk to him than to Rita. Believe me, we've got a lot more in common. Look, leave Rita out of this. OK. After all, she's your problem, not mine. I want you. Of course you do. But let your friend Rita drop Sally's name into the conversation and you'll run a mile. I won't. I don't care anymore. Sally's not here, you are. I've never felt like this about anyone. All men say that. There could be someone saying it to Sally right now. There's not. And even if there is, 
don't think I'd care. Don't waste my time, Kevin. I won't. Why should I? Was here this morning. Come in. Right, uh, this won't take long. Well, you must have uh, spoken to Maureen by now, and you must know what really happened. I'm not bothered about that. I'm innocent. I don't care. You can sit in stock rooms as long as you like. I don't like. I just wanted to let you know what the state of play is. <laughs> I thought you were coming around here and knocking my block up. <laughs> I'm not going to toss about you, lad. Fair enough. I just want to let you know that me and Maureen get on fine and we're giving it another try. Good, I'm glad. Well, don't be, because it's got nothing to do with you. She deserves a good time. I don't want your opinion. She's a very nice lady. Keep your hands off. What do you mean? Just what I said. Twice now you've got in my way. I turn me back and you make up to her. No, I haven't. Well, I'll tell you something, lad. If you come sniffing round... Well, I've not been sniffing around. I mean, why should I? Because every woman that you've ever had has dumped you. Your own wife's only happy a few thousand miles away. Well, that's me and you in the same league, isn't it? No. No, come off it. If your idea of the good life is spending a night in Blackpool with Maureen Holdsworth, well, you ought to be pitied rather than laughed at. Listen, Maureen only went with you because she felt sorry for you. That is not the excuse she used at the time, and she's no angel. I'll tell you what, Maureen deserves better than you. Maureen deserves older than me. You're asking for it. Oh, am I? I didn't have to ask Maureen for it. What? Look, 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 Bill, I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. Well, I mean this. Oh. 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 